In this video, I'm going to show you how to stream your 3DS or 2DS gameplay to your PC. If you record 3DS using a crappy webcam or phone, you can finally upgrade your gameplay. This guide is for the new 3DS and 2DS models as the older models are not powerful enough. It is possible to stream on the older models, for example using HZ mod, however you cannot achieve higher than 9 FPS, which is basically a slideshow, it's really not worth it. So here we go, this is what you need. You need a homebrewed new 3DS or 2DS with Luma custom firmware. This guide will work on 3DS system updated to 11.17.050 and previous firmware versions as well. But make sure to read the description to make sure this guide is still up to date. You will also need an internet connection on your console and if you plan on using this method to stream, you will need a 3.5mm aux cord to plug your 3DS into your PC to capture audio. I will be using Windows for this guide, however if you are on Mac, there will be an alternative link for you to use in the description. But anyways, to get started, there will be three links down below. The first one will take you to the Snickerstream GitHub page, and if you scroll all the way down, grab the Snickerstream v1.10x64 and it'll download a zip file in the bottom left. Now, if you are on Mac, you are not gonna download this Snickerstream. You're gonna go to the description and find the alternative link. It'll take you to this GitHub page where you can get CuteNTR032 and use this instead of Snickerstream. Next up, go to the second link. It should take you to this Luma 3DS 3GX loader. If you scroll down, we're just gonna grab this boot.firm. Since you've homebrewed your 3DS, this will look familiar. I'll tell you why in a sec. So click on boot.firm and it'll download in the bottom left. Head over to the third link and it'll take you here. And this is where we see this release is currently broken with official Luma 3DS. That is why we are grabbing that boot.firm and we're gonna replace the one that is already on our SD card. But I'll show you how to do that in a bit. So scroll down and we're gonna see this default banner and alternate banner. So scroll down, we're gonna grab the CIA file so boot ntr selector.cia, download it in the bottom left. And once you have all three of these, we are ready to open up our SD card that we use to mod our 3DS and get it set up. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up your CIAS folder. If you don't have one, just create it spelled CIAS. Open it up and grab the boot ntr selector.cia and drag it inside. It should look like this. Back on the root of your SD card, we're gonna find this boot.firm file. We're gonna right click on it and rename it. And just press underscore and call it old so that it looks like boot underscore old.firm. Now, the reason we're doing this is just in case we have any issues with the new boot.firm file, we can fix that issue by getting the old one back up and running. But once you have that renamed, grab the boot.firm and drag it onto the root of your SD card. And once you've done all that, we are ready to eject our SD card and head over onto the 3DS, or 2DS in my case. And once you turn your 3DS on, you will most likely see this page. Just make sure that there is an X on show NAND or user string in system settings and just press start and it'll load into your menu. And once you're in your menu, head over to the FBI app, which you should already have if you homebrewed your 3DS. And when it opens up, we're going to click A on SD, scroll down to CIAS, and you should see boot NTR selector.cia. Press A on it, go to install and delete CIA, press A, press A again, and this will install the CIA and then get rid of it off of your SD card. When the install is finished, just press A and it should be empty. Press the home button. Close your FBI software and you'll see new software has been added. If you go and open it up, you should see boot NTR selector, just like that. Now, before we run it, we need to grab our system's IP address. So for this, hold the left trigger down on the D-pad and select. And this should give you the Rosalina menu on the bottom screen. So go down to debugger options, press A. Press A on enable debugger. When it says starting debugger OK, press B. And now you can see your IP address in the top right of your bottom screen. Now once you see your 3DS IP address, write it down like I did here or take a picture 
and then we're going to scroll down to disable debugger and it'll say debugger disabled successfully press b and your address will be gone and then go ahead and press b twice and it should bring you back to your menu now we can go ahead and start the boot ntr selector so press a on it and run it press use default save settings and when you see this screen, just click on 3.6. And there we go, it is now running in the background. And just a reminder, you have to start this app each time you wanna to stream to your PC. And if you run it in any errors, I suggest rebooting your system and trying again before looking for solutions. Sometimes it can be glitchy. But there we go, we are ready to head over onto the PC and open up Snickerstream. Make sure you leave your 3DS on. And once you're back on your PC, this is where we're going to open up the Snickerstream download that we got earlier. I'm going to create a folder on my desktop, call it Snickerstream, and I'm highlighting everything inside of here and I'm going to put it in there just to keep it all organized. You should transfer over and you can exit the zip file. If you open up the folder we just created, you should see these files. Click on Snickerstream x64 and it should run. If you have any issues with Windows Firewall, just click Allow Access. But when it opens, you should see this. This is where our IP address comes in. So just type in the one that you saw on your screen, like so. We can change the screen priority from top screen or bottom screen. This means that it will give priority FPS to whichever screen you select. So if you select top screen, the higher FPS will be on the top screen. It just can't run both screens at the same FPS. You can change the presets and settings here, but I suggest just leaving it at balanced unless you know what you're doing, of course. Streaming app, if you go and select, we can see NTR, CFW, and HZ mod. HZ mod is the old one for the old 3DSs, but again, couldn't get higher than 9 FPS, so <laughs> it wasn't worth it. But we are using NTR, CFW, so just keep it on there. And then you also have the option to change your screen layout. You can play around with these once you actually stream and then you can see which ones you like. But once you have that already, just click connect. If you have a Windows Defender Firewall like I do, just click allow access. And there we go, that is my 3DS right now. And what's really cool, you can see the live FPS here. So right now we're getting around 30. So that's pretty good considering it is a 3DS. So right now I have my 2DS in my hands and we are going to see how well this works. As you can see here, there is not much delay at all. So you could literally play without looking at your actual console and just watch the stream on your PC. Now, if you're running into issues, just head over into FBI, press A on SD, go down to 3DS and press A, go to boot NTR selector, press A, Press A on current directory and press delete. And once you delete that directory, go back into NTR boot selector and choose the same settings that we did earlier and it should work. Now unfortunately, when you stream wirelessly to your PC, you are not able to capture the audio unless you plug in a 3.5mm aux cord from your 3DS to your PC. If you're using OBS Studio like me to record, you should be able to pick up that audio. If while you're streaming you want to change the settings, just turn your 3DS off and it should reset your Snicker stream so that you can choose which settings you want to change. If you're like me and want to stream CTGP7, you can skip the NTR boot selector and head straight into the app, press X, press A to start, and then press the home button once to bring you back to the home, and then home again. And it should bring you back into CTGP7 where you can load in and then load it onto your snicker stream. As you can see, you can also change your settings so you can have the top and bottom screen in separate windows, which really helps for streaming software like OBS or Streamlabs. And it also looks really great when you add an overlay just like this, it's very easy to make. You can have one with both screens or just with the top. But anyways, that pretty much sums up the video. So if you have any questions, just comment down below or you can join my Discord server but I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please leave a like, it really helps the channel out. If you want to tune in for the streams and play CTGP7 with me, make sure you subscribe and keep an eye out for when I go live. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh my god!